Hi, I'm Dan Stair of Daniel's Training Services, and I provide training and consulting services for the management of waste and also for the transport of hazardous materials. Uh, the purpose of this video is to provide a brief description of some new regulations, old regulations that were changed by some new regulations. What I'm going to be discussing here, summarizing briefly, are the requirements for a generator of hazardous waste to conduct a hazardous waste determination. Those were the old regs. They've been around for some time now. But some new regulations, the generator improvements rule, changed those regulations. And so there's changes, and that's what I'm going to be discussing in this video. Okay, a couple disclaimers and things. Uh, first off, this video is a very brief summary of some very complex regulations. Um, I've written articles. I've written an article in particular on this topic that's on my blog. I'll have a link to that article. So if you're interested in this video and you get some information from it, you're going to want to go to that article and look deeper into it. And I'll have links to other articles on my blog on other topics as they come up during the presentation here. So. Um, Another disclaimer, these regulations may change over time. So this article and this video is regarding the regulations that are in effect as of May 30th of 2017 under the Generator Improvements Rule. If at some point in the future the EPA changes their regulations, then that will change what I'm discussing here. Uh, also, a state with an authorized hazardous waste program may take a more stringent or more broad interpretation of these regs. So your, stri your state may be more strict in its uh, interpretation of these regulations. So watch for that. I'm going to be discussing the federal regulations. Um, and finally, don't rely entirely on this video or any information you find. Uh, you've got to do your own research. You've got to research the regulations and for yourself and that's one of the things I did in my article is reference the regulations and even show you where side by side the older regulations and the new regulations and the changes that have taken place. So do your homework. Okay, briefly the scope and applicability of these new regulations or the changes to the existing regulations. These regulations, the hazardous waste determination now applies to all hazardous waste generators. It was a little unclear prior to the generator improvements rule, but the new rule made it clear that all hazardous waste generators, large quantity, small quantity, very small quantity, must conduct the hazardous waste determination. Um, now, uh, another thing regarding the scope of these regulations is that because these changes from the generator improvements rule are more strict than the older regulations, your state must adopt them. Uh, all states have to adopt this federal rule eventually. Uh, they may, however, they may adopt these regulations and even go above and beyond them and require more. But at a minimum, they got to come to this standard that I'm addressing in this uh, video here. Okay. Um, also, another thing about the hazardous waste determination that was a little unclear before the generator improvements rule is that you must conduct a hazardous waste determination for all solid waste that you generate. Um, and so it's got to be done for all hazardous waste generators, pretty much for all waste that they generate. Okay, so that's our scope, that's our applicability. Why the change? What's the whole point of these regulations? EPA, US EPA, uh, made these changes that largely codified existing guidance and interpretation and enforcement. So really, in this new rule, in the new regulations, there's not any real knock your sock off brand new kind of stuff. However, now it's codified. Now it's official. They put it in the regulations that you must do these things. So that's an important part of all of this. And the reason why US EPA did this is, and this is in their, from their own words, from the preamble in the Federal Register, is 
they wanted to ensure that all generators make an accurate hazardous waste determination as a critical first step in the cradle to grave management of a hazardous waste. And that is very important for compliance and for your own safety uh, and, and everything else when it comes to the management of waste. So many companies that I'm familiar with skip over this step. They get right to the labeling and the marking and the shipping and offsite and doing all that kind of stuff. And you gotta do this first. You have to conduct a thorough, and as we're gonna see, accurate hazardous waste determination for all waste that you generate, okay? And that's the whole purpose of the generator improvement rule and codifying uh, um, these uh, kind of gray and, and ambiguous uh, rulings and, and codifying it all in the regulations that you must do this. Okay, now some key terms that come up. I explain these more in my article, but one word that you're going to see is accurate. US EPA requires a generator to conduct an accurate hazardous waste determination, which to cut right through it all means you got to get it right. Just doing it, following the steps isn't enough. Your hazardous waste determination, the result of it must be correct. If it's not, then you didn't perform it accurately as the regulations require. Another term that leads to some confusion that needs clarification is solid waste because you must conduct a hazardous waste determination for all solid waste that you generate. Well, what is a solid waste? A solid waste, quite simply, is anything you throw away, anything you discard, be it a solid or a liquid or a semi-solid or even a containerized gas, like an aerosol can. If you discard it, if you're throwing it away, and that includes recycling, it's a solid waste. A way to think about it is, if it's not your finished product going out the door, it's probably a waste. Uh, and the term used by US EPA is solid waste. So if you've got a solid waste, then you must conduct a hazardous waste determination for it. Okay, what is that hazardous waste determination? Well, the US EPA in the regulations codified certain steps. There are certain steps that you must follow. The word previously was methods, kind of vague and a little subjective. Now they specifically require you to follow certain steps. Those steps I have summarized here, okay? So, first off, if you generate a solid waste, you must complete a hazardous waste determination. The steps are, number one, determine your point of generation. That is the exact point where your material, your product, your feedstock becomes a solid waste. So you have to identify that first. Once you've identified the point of generation, that's your solid waste. And your hazardous waste determination begins there and continues on all the way through the final disposal of that solid waste. So that's number one, determine your point of generation. Number two, Determine if the solid waste is excluded from regulation at 40 CFR 261.4. So those are the federal EPA exclusions from regulation. And so that's your next step. You must determine if any of those exclusions apply. If it's not excluded, well, let me back up a step. If it is excluded, you're done. If it's excluded from regulation, um, then you don't have to go any further. But if it's not excluded, then you have to determine if your solid waste is a listed hazardous waste. And that determination is based entirely on knowledge. It's a knowledge-based determination, and the regulations specify what that knowledge could be, okay? Then, after that, you have to determine if your solid waste is also a characteristic hazardous waste. Now, characteristic hazardous waste can be determined one of two ways. Either by knowledge or, if that proves to be inadequate, through testing of a representative sample of the waste. So you really got two ways to determine a characteristic. Knowledge, testing, or, I guess a third way, a combination of the two. So that would be your next step to determine if it is a characteristic hazardous waste. Um, if 
it's a hazardous waste. Your next step is to determine if other specified exemptions and exclusions apply. And the regulations list what those exclusions are, and I spell them out in my article, so you can look to that. Um, then you have to keep a record. So you have to maintain a record of your hazardous waste determination for any waste that becomes a hazardous waste. So um, you are not required to keep a record if your solid waste turns out not to be a hazardous waste. You're not required to keep a record in that case. However, it's highly recommended, and I think it's a real good idea. So even if your hazardous waste determination comes out that it's a non-hazardous waste, you still should maintain a record of that because for one reason, an inspector can always ask for it. They can always ask to see your determination, and if you don't have it, well, then you gotta scramble and put one together. So if you've gone through the process, even for your non-hazardous waste, it is recommended, not required, for your non-hazardous waste to keep a copy as a record. Hazardous waste, you gotta do it, okay? And then your final step is to identify all of the hazardous waste codes that will apply. And the regs say you must do this prior to shipping the waste off-site. It's a much better idea to do it now um, and get that done. So as you perform your hazardous waste determination, identify your hazardous waste codes and apply them to the waste. Okay, that's it. Now again, that was a brief summary. I wrote a large article on this subject. You can read that and dig deeper into it. Research the regs on your own. Uh, I have another article which lays out side by side the original form of the regulations and the changes uh, made by the generator improvement rule. So watch out for that. Do your own research, contact your state for guidance, and also contact me if you have any questions. Thank you very much.